working on building my new fuel lines. Again, I got some 8AN PTFE. It has a special coating, um, a conductive coating to stop the buildup of static electricity when the fuel runs through it, so there's no spontaneous combustion. Um, of course, it has the PTFE itself, it has a metal sleeve, and it also has an outer uh, DuPont Hystrix sleeve. I also purchased another sleeve for it. This is some expandable silicone sleeve fiberglass from McMaster car. I got 10 feet of this, 10 feet of this. So that should be plenty to reproduce this long return line, the secondary return line, and the feed line. Hopefully I have enough and don't have to order any more. I guess we'll see. I'm gonna start working on these and uh, I guess I'll show a little bit about how these PTFE lines are gonna go together. It's a little bit different than this traditional um, rubber type AN fittings. Working on getting the fiberglass silicone sleeving on the fuel line. What you gotta be really careful about is not getting fiberglass inside of the line. So you can see I taped it up so that nothing can get in there when I was sliding it on. And then I also have one of these um, like fish bowl cleaners that I'm gonna run through the tube as well to make sure there's no fiberglass stuck in there because I'm, I'm gonna have to clean this um, a little bit better. But if you get fiberglass stuck in here and then it gets in a fuel injector or something, you're gonna blow up and have a bad day. So very important that you make sure nothing's getting in these lines when you're building them. Working on assembling the other side of this line. The first side I did off camera and it went very smoothly. I really like these PTFE style lines. They're a lot easier to assemble than the rubber inner, the, the inner rubber style AN lines. And I am starting to assemble this end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is you wanna slide this on first. If you slide this on after you cut away the hystrix layer and peel back the metal sleeve, it's gonna be hard to get this on. So once I slide that on, I'm gonna cut a little bit of the hystrix layer off, about that much. If you cut too much of this off, then you're gonna have stainless braid sticking out on the final assembly of your line. And you don't want that because that's gonna look sloppy. People are gonna know you, you messed that up. So once that's cut off, then I can start peeling back the stainless. I'm gonna use a little flat head screwdriver and then basically I can slide this onto the PTFE tube and then I'm ready to slide this in, pull this back up and start screwing it on for assembly. Again, this PTFE tube has an inner liner to stop static electricity from building up and, and causing the fuel to combust. It has the PTFE tube, it has a stainless liner, it has a Hystrix liner, and then I also have this fiberglass silicone liner that's good for 300F, so. And this Hystrix liner is good for 300F as well, so tons of protection here. And of course, assembling on a fairly clean surface. Flip this around now, because you don't want to get debris in here. Anyway, once this is assembled, I'm going to clean it all out with one of those fish tank swabby thingies, so. Let's cut this apart. Peel that back, pull back the stainless, and start getting everything installed. I'll show you the assembly process a little bit more. So I got my little screw part on here. You can see I got this cut off, and I also have it peeled back a little bit. And you can see it's a little bit less than the length of the olive, so that's fine. That means you know none of this is going to be protruding when you screw this part on. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this on. I usually get it started, and then I kind of... Put it on the table like that and push down on it to get it fully seated and then we can finish up the rest of the assembly the olive compression fitting whatever you want to call it, it's on you can see it's aligned up perfectly so now basically i'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the threads on the part that slides into the tube i'm going to slide this in and then pull this up and i can start hand tightening to get it started and then i got my an wrenches over here that i'm going to use to tighten it up all the way um, well, not all the way. You want to leave about a little one millimeter gap here. So I leave a gap that I can get my fingernail in and then also line these up so that it looks nice. You can see the aluminum, using the aluminum wrenches does a pretty good job. It doesn't nick it too bad. Not as bad as if you would use steel. But um, try and get this one a little bit better this time and see if we can not nick it at all. Get the fuel line installed, just temporarily. Looks great. Got to pull the sleeving a little bit more this way. But yeah, everything fits here, and uh, this video is gonna be a little bit out of order, so you might see some other goodies that are coming later, but. Looks good down there. I'm gonna go connect it, make sure it fits, and we can start working on the return. Big reason I'm even redoing these fuel lines in the first place is I wanna put a flex fuel sensor in. 
This is the continental sensor, does um, ethanol percentage and fuel temperature, and I got it mounted right here. So I got my return, this is my old return, you can see it's got a little hodgepodge barb to 8 a.m. majigger bob. And um, what I'm gonna do is just cut this about here. That's gonna go into that barb with a clamp. And then now I'm gonna have a quick disconnect on the sensor um, for the in, well I guess the in and the out. And of course, the sensor, the direction does not matter, so I do have it mounted upside down. That's because it fits better that way and makes the connector face that way so I can just shoot a wire right up there. And I wanted to do it there because I could have maybe done it here or up there, but I wanted as far as way as possible from the downpipe, which snakes about here. So nothing in the way, and I think this is a great position for it. So if you ever want to mount a flex fuel sensor in these cars, I think this is the best spot. And again, just some quarter inch self tappers and uh, I'll throw some thread locker on those and that thing shouldn't be going anywhere. I'm gonna get this line cut up, I'm gonna get that on the quick disconnect, I'm gonna get it clamped and then I can start working on the return over here, which basically if we pull this off, if I can do this with one hand, it's a little bit difficult. Come on. All right, well I can't do that with one hand, but I have a quick disconnect to uh, 8 a.m. and then at 8 a.m. straight there that's gonna go into the line. So I'm gonna start working on this and get this wrapped up. Another thing to note is you always put a flex fuel sensor on the return. If you put it on the feed, that could be a possible restriction. So always put it on the return, never put it on the feed. Got all the fuel lines run, we got the feed, and we got the return. Pretty happy with how the two return lines came out. There used to be two bungs here. I chopped them off and welded them shut over here too, just always getting in the way of stuff. Pretty happy with that. And then intakes just gonna come right over there and down. Um, this gauge is gonna go too, because it's it's always been in the way too. And I don't need it anymore because I have one on the rail, so to the ECU. So no point in that. Getting close. Just gotta wrap up a couple more things and hopefully we're done with the fuel system. Uh, so fixing this frickin' catch box turned into a nightmare. When I was welding these up, I ended up like knocking off the, the baffle inside and it was just rattling around. And I tried like drilling two holes here and I could push it against with my finger. And I was trying to like tack it back to the box, but I just, I couldn't get it. So I ended up having to cut open the frickin' thing to remove the baffle, but. My welds came out pretty good, I think. I'm getting pretty much better at aluminum, I think. I'm definitely starting to get the hang of it. it. It's fun to weld aluminum. Really noisy and loud, but really fun to weld. They're a little dirty. Maybe I could have used a little bit more cleaning action on it, but. Pretty happy with this. Um, got all this done. All this is welded up. All those annoying bungs are out of the way. And now I can finally have a bit more room around here for the fuel lines and the fuel pressure regulator. So glad I did this because it gave me some more practice with aluminum. So it is what it is. Got the fuel lines all done. I think they came out really good. Again, they're Hystrix coated, stainless and PTFE with another additional silicone fiberglass um, sheathing on top. So they should be very protected from heat I removed my um, gauge, fuel pressure gauge. Don't need it anymore because I have an electronic one that goes to the ECU. And I got my 1 16th MPT to 3AN fitting for the new 3AN back lines. And then on the return, I also added a foot of this DEI heat sleeve and it's also fiberglass because it runs near the screamer pipe. So I don't want anything, you know, getting too hot over in that area, so. Here it has fiberglass silicone, a thinner fiberglass silicone, the Hystrix, the stainless, and the frickin' PTFE line. Should be very protected in this area. And I think the lines came out very nice and uh, professional. I'm gonna get them installed, and I'm gonna try and prime the system and make sure there's no leaks. Plenty of clearance between the flex fuel sensor and the downpipe. There will be no issues with heat in this. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's uh, another reason why I didn't really put it here. It's just too close. I mean, got at least four or five inches, probably even more of clearance. So I'm happy with that. Finished up the fuel lines. 
pressure's tested them. I got no leaks so far. Definitely a lot more room with these bungs removed now. So I'm pretty happy with how the fuel lines came out. Still gotta do a little bit of line management here when I get the coil pack rail on, but I'm pretty good so far and happy I made these changes. Also pulled off this, um, the, the gauge that I had here because I don't need it. I got the electronic one right here. And then gonna be running some new 3AN back lines and, and whatnot, so. Pretty happy with the fuel setup and still got to wire in the uh, ethanol sensor. It just takes a 12 volt power ground and a uh, signal. And got to wire that up to the ECU, so got to do that at some point. But yeah, fuel lines are nice and complete.